you could it, 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 it'll encompass pharmaceutical bioinformatics, bioinformatics, chemoinformatics, or chemogenomics, or even proteochemometrics. So, I mean, we, we hope that such understanding could help to develop novel bio, bioactive compounds that have uh, therapeutic activity. So, a little background breast can about breast cancer. It is the most common type of cancer in women worldwide. Uh, approximately 1.7 million new cases are diagnosed in 2012, making it second most common cancer overall. 12% of women have the probability of being diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh, the risk factors of breast cancer include family history of breast cancer, obesity, alcohol, and also um, they, they said being Caucasian as well. Uh, one in eight will have breast cancer. It doesn't mean one in eight uh, on the left panel here, but one in eight more uh, older women are more exposed to having uh, breast cancer. If you look at the distribution of the new cases, you will see here uh, red me meaning uh, higher aged uh, and, and the distribution in per 100,000. So you see that there's a big problem there. And uh, <clears throat> one of the first drugs for breast cancer is tamoxifen. Uh, it binds to the estrogen receptor. However, it affords several side effects which makes it uh, unpleasurable and th therefore cause the need for drug discovery effort to find a new drug. So, so amaromatase is a, as a drug, it's a promising drug target for breast cancer. It is a member of the cytochrome P450 uh, superfamily known as the CYP19A1. It is a rate limiting enzyme catalyzing the last step of the estrogen biosynthesis by converting androgens to estrogen. So, owing to its importance toward tumor cell growth promotion, therefore, it is a promising therapeutic route for treatment of breast cancer. So, you, hear, you see here that the A ring on the left part, like for example, testosterone, is converted to the ar aromatic ring uh, uh, to the right side in, in the estradiol. So, you see that the A ring becomes aromatic, meaning that there is a degeneration of the electrons. So aromatase inhibitors, so far there have been uh, three generation and the three aromatase inhibitors in clinical use include anastrozole, as, as you see on the top right, uh, letrozole and exemistane. Uh, the both two are, are non-steroidal, whereas the exemistane is the uh, steroidal aromatase inhibitor. Uh, in spite of its therapeutic effect, there are still undesirable side effects, therefore the cause and need for searching for novel aromatase inhibitors. So, uh, this is our ongoing work on aromatase inhibitor. So, in 2011, we reported how the nine drugs of aromatase inhibitors have been, how, how, how they are docked into the aromatase because shortly, this is shortly after uh, the publication of the crystal structure uh, by Gosh and co-worker. Uh, in nature on, on, on the crystal structure of the aromatase. So we, we looked at how it binds to the reported three generation of aromatase inhibitor drug. And we also did a, a molecular dynamic simulation. Um, so, so that was one of the first paper to, to investigate such docking. And then in 2013, we, we looked at how uh, a group of Litraso analog uh, exhibit aromatase inhibition by, by applying machine learning approach, particularly uh, neural network and support vector machine and then we were able to get good prediction and we also perform descriptor analysis using the radar plot shown in the lower left hand corner to look at the uh, easy to interpret descriptor like A log P, molecular weight, number of cyclic ring, uh, etc. Number of hydrogen bond donor, etc. Uh, and then we also looked at looking at the structure activity relationship for a set of flavonoids because phytoestrogen are also have been reported to have uh, good aromatase in inhibition activity. Uh, for example, in, in Thailand, we, we have a lot of uh, people drinking soy milk and soy milk has a lot of uh, phytoestrogen. So th this is a, a good source for uh, postmenopausal women to, to, to have, I mean, because of the potential aromatase inhibitory uh, activity that it possesses. So we apply multivariate analysis looking at the uh, 
multiple linear regression, artificial neural network, and support vector machine. As you can see, all three methods were able to do quite good prediction. Uh, we also applied uh, molecular docking and also QSAR in looking at how a set of uh, coumarin analogs bind to the aromatase. Um, and then the key residues such as methionine-374, isoleucine-305, and threonine-310 are also important in binding to the uh, coumarin analogs. And we also predicted the activity as shown lower right-hand corner. <clears throat> so um, in our lab, uh, Vida Prachasirikon, a PhD student, uh, and, and colleagues have synthesized meta complexes of hydroxyquinoline and uracil derivatives. I believe this is the first report to apply meta complex as a aromatase inhibitor. So what they what what they did was to have ligands such as the hydroxyquinoline um, quinoline shown in the number one here. Uh, and have it as a metal complex with uh, compound 2 or compound 3 in various mixture as shown in uh, here in 4 to 9. And then we observed that complex number 6, all right here, complex number 6 was able to get 300 nanomolar IC50, which was quite good uh, when, when compared to the uh, Litroso aromatase inhibitor, which afforded about three, about 30 nanomolar. So, so I mean, it, it, as long as it's in the sub one micromolar, we believe it would be a promising uh, lead compound to further investigate this. Um, the group of uh, our collaborator, uh, Professor Rachanok Bin Gao, uh, she synthesized a set of uh, one, two, three triacyl sulfonamides, and then we, and then and then we we tested the bioactivity and we we performed docking and and, and got the. Uh, the origin of how it inhibits the protein. And so we can see that threonine 310 again interacts uh, with the inhibitor as long as methionine 374. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, recently, in about two, three years ago, we performed a compilation from the literature uh, by compiling from, I guess, 1,000 uh, papers. All, all reported compounds that have aromatase inhibition activity. So, uh, and then we perform chemical space analysis, uh, dividing the data into non-steroidal AIs uh, and then steroidal AIs or aromatase inhibitor. And then, and then we perform molecular fragment analysis, looking at which fragment are good for the activity. And then we also did a decision tree uh, prediction model so that we could look at the, the rule-based uh, way on, on how to differentiate between active inhibitors and inactive inhibitors where we set the criteria at one micromolar. <coughs> <coughs> and then shortly after, 2014, a year later, uh, uh, Dr. Apilak Walachachiwan, uh, he went to uh, in, in Italy to collaborate with Professor Andrei Toropov uh, who developed a SMILE-based uh, descriptor software called Coro. So what this software did was take the SMILEs directly and then compute a set of descriptor and then uh, utilize um, multiple linear regression along with Monte Carlo uh, to do the prediction. And we, we performed three different split and good prediction performance were observed here. And we observed that top fragments that increases the activity include the presence of cyclic ring, absence of halogens, etc. Uh, top, top fragments uh, decreasing the activity would be the branching in the molecular structure, etc. <coughs> and recently, last year, uh, Dr. Wachara Shumbutong, he developed this simple interpretable learning method, which he termed the ELM approach. And uh, so, so the pseudocode is shown here and good prediction performance were observed and then we, we received a plot where we could look at the feature importance uh, so that we rank them according to their feature usage. So the most important descriptor would be at the top. So then we could deduce which, which descriptor are important for predicting the activity. Uh, recently, uh, our PhD student, Saul Simeon, did a pretty chemometric 
uh, modeling experiment uh, looking <coughs> compiling results from the primary literature from the work of Cal and the work of Avray and then we, we derive a set of 13 aromatase inhibitor and 13 aromatase mutant. So we have a matrix of, uh, of 10 compounds, 13 protein mutants. So we have a bioactivity data point of approximately 130. And then we integrate that into one unified model using proteochemometric and use uh, POS to do the prediction. And we, we observe quite good results. And then we, we look at the, uh, we also apply the random forest as well in comparison to look at the feature usage so as to interpret the good uh, feature for the inhibition. We perform Y scrambling and as you can see in model 13, model 11, uh, and most of the model we were able to differentiate between the actual model and the scrambled model which signify that there's no chance correlation and this and the right panel just illustrate the correlation between the experimental in the x-axis with the predicted PIC50. Um, so I, I guess this concludes our, our talk. So in conclusion, we would like to say that we have utilized several computational model, modeling approaches at different level. Um, Lincoln, for example, QSAR modeling, structure-based, for example, molecular modeling, molecular dynamics, molecular docking, uh, as well as systems-based. Uh, particularly proteochemometric modeling uh, and we, we found that these three different approaches were complementary and instrumental in unraveling the origin of aromatase inhibitory activity. We also did this in, in collaboration with a synthetic chemist in, in order to verify some of the predictions and, and then the ligand system based modeling were were, were quite good in that it required le less computational cost than the structure-based one, like for example, molecular dynamics, which uh, in the early phases, we, we, we spent about six months um, uh, doing the simulation for that. Okay, so thank you for your attention and I welcome questions. <coughs> oh, last but not least, um, we are thankful for our colleagues at Mahidon University Uppsala University, Sinakalan Willow University, and grants from the Go Oriented Research Grant from Mahidon University and the National Research University Initiative for funding this work. Okay.